The Broadway show is back with another stellar episode. I'm Tamsin Fidel. The Broadway revival of Funny Girl opens on Broadway in April, and its star-studded cast, for sure, led by Beanie Feldstein, five-time Emmy winner Jane Lynch, and Tony and Olivier Award nominee Ramin Karamloo. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. Ramin Karamloo will take on the iconic leading man role of Nick Arnstein opposite Beanie Feldstein in the spring's hotly anticipated revival of Funny Girl. We met up in the heart of Times Square to talk all about it. People have literally been waiting for Funny Girl to play Broadway ever since 1964 when it first opened at the Winter Garden Theater up there. Yeah. Barbara Streisand and Sidney Chaplin. It has never been back on Broadway. There have been many attempts to bring it back to Broadway and now it's finally coming and you're in it. That's crazy and I feel, I didn't take it for granted but it was it didn't really dawn on me how important this show is to New York City, you know, like this is part of your culture, this is part of like a coming of age for many people, it was their, they, they grew up with it so there's a real nostalgia but also this is going to be f this generation's funny girl so I think it's going to, uh, it's going to marry both worlds and bring the story back and it's got so much heart. Beanie Feldstein is phenomenal and uh, it, an absolute joy to work with every day as well. I feel like one of the reasons why we haven't seen Funny Girl on Broadway in all these years, almost 60 years, is the Barbara Streisand thing. This show made Barbara Streisand a star. This is a legendary performance and it's always been kind of like, who's gonna take this on? And Beanie Feldstein sort of came into our conscious in the last few years. Everyone's sort of fallen in love with her. What's it like in the rehearsal room? As I say, it works from the top down and she's a great leader and she is a phenomenal Fanny Bryce, but she's gonna be even better. Hello, gorgeous. Nikki Arnstein, Nikki Arnstein. I, I love it. I, I mean, that, that's like iconic. That's Barbara Streisand and the, you know, we, we all know those, those words. That's you now. Of course, we also talk about Omar Sharif who played the role in the film. Yeah. Egyptian actor. So it kind of has a link to Middle Eastern handsome dudes like you. Well, listen, your words, not mine. And I, <laughs> I you know, those are big shoes to fill as well. Omar Sharif is a ridiculously uh, amazing actor. But again, you just take one day at a time, serve the piece as best as possible. We got an amazing company, Jane Lynch, Jared Grimes, this company is, yeah. like when Jared dances, oh I'm like, God, yeah. he's got this thing about, he makes it look so effortless that it almost makes you think, oh yeah, it looks easy, I'll do that. And you think, wait a minute, how are you doing all this? He's, he makes me want to dance, I'll put you that way. You have a lot of great stuff to do with Beanie in this show. Um, the, it, the relationship between Fanny and Nick Arnstein, her, her real husband, the yeah. real guy, there's a real story, fraught with drama and romance, high emotions, it, it's it's quite a story. Yeah, it's bittersweet, uh, heartbreaking love story. I remember when we did our first cold read, we're getting choked up by the end. I was like, I don't know why I didn't anticipate this, what, what was happening with this relationship and the sort of like where they start at the beginning of the show to where they end. It's quite a journey and it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, you're gonna break Beanie's heart every night. We're all gonna be watching. Well, you know, without it, there's no story. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a revised book by Harvey Firestein, yeah. Michael Mayer's director. And there's new choreography by Eleanor Scott and Ayadeli Cassell. Yeah. So this is really a new funny girl. It's an opportunity to take a classic and look at it with fresh eyes. Absolutely, and with Ayadeli bringing in that tap world, it's, it's a whole different, they're different cats, man. These are the cream of the crop and seeing what they do, it's, it's, there's gonna be so much in the show that stops the show. Uh -huh. And everyone shines and everyone brings their A game, like their, their star power as their skills. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy to, to see in the room, to experience it. Then I think, what am I gonna offer? You know? And the score is pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's a whole new world for me, singing that sort of jazzy swing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not in my, uh, wheelhouse which is great because every day I'm finding new things as a singer but there's some new stuff we're we're creating and adding which yeah, this, again I didn't realize was going to be in the show and is there's a lot more singing oh. than since day one so I'll put it that way you didn't have the same background that a lot of the musical theater performers on Broadway have it feels like you kind of came here on a roundabout path yeah like I was born in Iran we escaped because of the revolution in 78 moved to Italy and then from Italy as refugees went to Canada and started life there, you know, hard-working parents. So I was brought up like a, 
what you call a typical Canadian kid back in the day, hockey, everything was sports. I was a bit rough around the edges. I'd fight a little more than I should be fighting. And I got suspended for a year of fighting from my hockey team in high school. And at that point, I saw Phantom of the Opera. And I, it was the first time I felt a lump in my throat. I didn't know what these emotions were. I thought, I don't know what I'm experiencing here, but I like it. Lo and behold, I started getting into Phantom more. And I kept listening to it. I'd skip school to go watch it. Don't skip school, go to school, stay in school. I'd skip school to watch Phantom of the Opera. And I'd start meeting the actors and I'd be asking questions. And then at this point, I'm into like De Niro, Pacino, Brando, all these like the studio actors. Started reading books on acting. I think, I think I want to do this. I want to be the Phantom. And then my friend was, giving me grief about it, like, you know, give me a bit of rib. I was like, I bet you'd become the Phantom. Made a bet at 16, and at 26, I phoned him up, I said, guess what? <laughs>